safe to say this nightmare is over. Good morning, it's Friday, and the boys are here bright and early, and they're putting on my chimneys, so they're literally cutting the roof to put these chimneys in. It's very exciting. So a little change of plans. Mark had a little bit of an incident with the sprayer late last night and I have to run and get parts and it's about an hour away um, and the boys are starting to put the chimneys in and I'm gonna miss it so I told them to go slow <laughs> but I can see them here I'll just show you guys. So it begins. So yeah hopefully I don't miss too much of it. I'm thinking it'll take most of the day, but basically they're cutting a hole in my, they're cutting a hole in my roof in between, in between each of those purlins and they're putting in the chimneys and the, the brackets, the frames are already there and mounted. They just really just have to put up the physical chimneys and they needed all work. Some of them blew off my wagon in the fall. We had a pretty big windstorm and it sent a couple flying, so they had to fix a few. So and here's my daughter. Loves Ozzy Osbourne. This is a new thing. Hi. Listening to Ozzy again? Obsessed. You're obsessed. Yeah. What's up? I have to go to the forest to get parts for Dad for the sprayer. You want to come for the ride? Or are you good? Are you getting McDonald's? Am I getting McDonald's? I wasn't going to. I can. All right. All right. guys this is this is the best day ever safe to say this nightmare is over at least I hope so take a look at my beautiful beautiful barn Wow. So they did that pretty quick. They were in and out of here. Probably they were here, what time did they start? They might have started around nine and they were out of here by one. So that's the thing with these guys, they get everything kind of done and because they're always fighting the wind, they, they usually pr just pre-do everything that they possibly can. Then the day that they come in, all they had to do was cut the hole and install the chimney. So. Like the air feels better already. Now, mind you, the big door's open, but it's gonna make a big difference. Now, I have to price fans, which the uh, the big ass fans that we priced is just out of the out of the out of the budget. We can't afford them. So now we're back to the drawing board, going back to those original Cyclone fans to see if we can afford them. But oh, I don't know, you guys, with everything that hap everything that's going on with the economy and with um, just we never know what the markets are gonna do I just I don't know it, I want to stay true to what I wanted to do but 
I, uh, I also don't want to spend money if, uh, if that payback takes, takes too long. So we'll have to do a capital budget analysis and just see how long, how many years it'll take before it starts paying for themselves. And if it makes sense for the entire farm, then we will do it, but we won't do it without some really, uh, crunching some pretty heavy numbers. So anyway, oh wow, this feels so good. So, so good. I guess a little recap about these chimneys. If you uh, if you haven't been with me for very long, uh, just before my December lambing group, literally days before my December lambing group, and a day after we put our combine away from what was kind of a stressful fall, um, we had a fluke. It was a warm day, so my curtains opened because they're temperature regulated. And for whatever reason, that day there was a crazy wind and the direction switched and uh, the wind got in the barn and it tried to escape in the chimneys and it went one, it just, you can tell the one that it hit was right by the seam and it looked like someone took an exacto knife and cut like a big square on the northeast corner of the barn and it stayed like that. I mean, I was like, oh, thank goodness, it's just above my handling system, it's not above the sheep. But then, uh, so then I, I called Brightspan, they put me at the top of the line, they had a new, uh, a new roof sitting here ready to install like that Friday, so it happened on a Wednesday, by Friday afternoon that tarp was sitting outside my barn, and, uh, but the wind was crazy that weekend, they could not put it on, and they were short help, so they brought in people from other companies to come, and it was quite a thing, and I was so grateful. Um, and they were planning to come, I think, on the Tuesday. It was the first day the, lint, the winds were going to be low enough. But Sunday, Saturday night, the wind switched and it was howling and the temperature dropped and we got freezing rain. So we had a freezing rainstorm and what ended up happening is Sunday morning, Mark got up to make his coffee. I was in the other room editing or something and he's like, Sandy, it's dark outside, but I can hear that. I can hear the roof. I think it's, I think it's all down. And I went outside. And it looked like, I was just devastated. It looked like a bomb had gone off. The tarp had completely ripped off the rest of that half of the barn. Uh, so then half the ewes were exposed to the, the sky, uh, which they're not used to. So, um, and my ewes were all due like within that week, the end of that week. And they all pushed back to the back of the pen and I'm like, oh my God, they're, they're gonna abort, they're gonna miscarry. So I was really, really, I was, I was a mess. Oh, I forgot a step there. It rained. Uh, it actually rained on the Monday. <laughs> so Tuesday morning, however, they got here. They got that, they got it up. Uh, the wind stayed down for as many hours as they needed it. And these guys were amazing. We got it up and all I had to do was really clean everything out. And I only lost, uh, only one you miscarried through that whole thing. So, um, and then we went right into lambing. Literally the day after I got the barn cleaned out, they started lambing. So I was like, I'm so thankful. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they waited. And then we went right into lambing and it was like a month of lambing and uh, so and then after that I had the barn just because I had this extra hang overhang with the, with the tarp uh, with the roof we had so much flooding like if flood every time it rained um, it didn't matter if the curtains were up or down the rain would come in on this half and it would flood uh, the alleyways and then it would take a couple hours to clean it out so that happened a few times so the end of the day, I'm just so thankful that this is all done. I'm hoping this is the last time we have to revisit it. They did a few little minor adjustments that just were updates on that roof. So I'm hoping that this won't happen again. So that is the story. That is hopefully the end of this nightmare and it is put to bed for the day. And now I have to, I think I finally guilted Mark into letting me plant some soybeans. So keep your fingers crossed that I do not mess up anything because uh, he has got it in his mind that I'm a little bit of a cloud and that bad things are happening when I try to take over. So um, I love planting soybeans. I want it to go smoothly. So I'm going to head out there and, uh, and take you guys to the tractor with me. But guys, we made it. The barn is fixed and feels pretty good. Look where I am. 
So Mark just left. He uh, he wanted to do the headlands. He wanted to get this planter or this drill set up um, just because the spacing. He wants the he's he's got half this drill lifted up because these can be spaced as narrow as uh, seven and a half inches. But he wants to plant the mains at 15 inches apart, and he wants the rows in between the old corn stock rows. So he wanted to set it for me because I don't do this stuff enough to be. Um, good at it as Mark quotes I'm I, I know enough just to be dangerous and uh, in fact so dangerous he hasn't wanted me to take over but I finally was able to get in here he's got enough to do he's got to uh, fix the sprayer and he's got to bring me some seed and the conveyor so um, we're all busy Jack's in a field right over there uh, using the Joker and he's kind of grumpy because he had some he had some stuff he wanted to get done to today, so we've only really been hard at it for like two days and we're already like anyways, I'm almost at the end, so uh, I'm just so happy I get to be in the seat. So here's the field. Um, this is the field in in its entirety, and this is just me. I'm the arrow, and uh, so that's tractor steering itself again. Same egg leader GPS. Different tractor. And uh, yeah. Mr. Lines. And then this is how much seed I have in the in the drill still. The seed all goes the seed all goes in there. And then it this is just called a seed drill. A little different than a planter. Mark calls it controlled spill. Mark's dream is to be able to plant his beans, but he feels guilty having a corn planter, bean planter, and uh, a drill. So the drill is what we will continue to use. Plus, we've been watering. So I keep having a, I keep having a, um, a block here, number twenty-five. If I stare at it long enough, it won't go off, and that would be amazing. There it goes. But then it goes right back off, so... Mark said to give it always like 10 or 15 seconds before I panic, so... We've had a couple moments of panicking, but it keeps going off. It's been like two rounds. Okay, so a little update. Uh, number 25 ended up being a little more than what I thought, so when Mark came to fill up the seed drill I told him what was happening and he's like oh it shouldn't be like that all the time and I said okay um, so we went another round uh, it went off on him so he looked and there was a piece of soybean stock caught in where the seed comes out and you couldn't get it you can't get a finger in there you can't get a screwdriver in there he was using I'll show you he was usually using like our guard he was using like our garden flag so it's been kind of abused now but uh, could not get it out so we went a few more rounds and he was able to it was able to wiggle it and he finally got a finger on it got it out but oh my gosh uh, so he has once again confirmed that I am cursed and that this thing only plugs when I'm on it, which for the last two years, that is exactly what's happened. But knock on wood, it's been good since he's been gone. The newest drama is these gray skies that are coming from the east. When we never get storms from the east, they always come from the west. But check this out. Does that look like... Maybe it'll stay south, but... That looks pretty dark to me. So we'll see, it says 40% chance, but oh boy. So it's been, um, it was going really good for a few hours. I only have maybe 10 acres left and I have a plug in another unit and I cannot for the life of me figure out what is going on and I've gone out two or three times but it's so dark and I'm trying to hold a flashlight and use a screwdriver and if anyone has a John Deere drill, seed drill like this, you can't see because it it's dark, 
they give you no room to get in and underneath these things. There's pipes and hoses and and bars and I can't I cannot get in there and and brace myself. So anyways, Jess is picking me up because uh, we're gonna wait till the daylight. Mark is spraying and if he gets one more call from me, I think he's going to lose it. <laughs> so that's it tonight. I'm calling it a night. I can't uh, I can't do too much more and it's what time is it now? It's late and uh, haven't ate. I'm hungry and tired and we're all really grumpy so <laughs> cheers to another day. Good morning it's Saturday and it's still summer like two days in a row I don't even know what to say about that. I'm gonna get this stuff in the barn done because for the rest of the day I'm helping Mark again feeling much better than I did last night. Last night with our GPS going down and my seed tubes getting plugged and they only seem to get plugged for me, according to Mark. I think he might finish planting that. He's spraying right now. But what I get to do, I get to run that. <laughs> I'm gonna be on roller duty. Okay, we got our hay chopped. Um, most of it's in my pockets. A lot of it where my cuffs were. I'm just really itchy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm just in the office waiting for some more instructions from Mark, but look what I got in the mail yesterday. So it's a little collection of porcelain. I don't know, little sheepies. And this is my favorite one. Look at this one. So cute, eh? Anyways, thank you to um, Susan and her husband for sending that. That is so sweet. Um, I don't know how it got in my mailbox. I have a P.O. box, but she seemed to find my address. It wasn't even my address, but it found my house. So anyways, thank you so much for that. That was... That was really kind. You guys are amazingly, you're so generous and I, I have, I've had so much in the mail that it's hard for me to get on here and thank everybody, but uh, just know that I'm so, I'm so, so grateful and I do not expect anything from you guys. I just want to share the story and that's why I'm doing it and yeah, just thanks for being there and doing that. My poor dog's not used to this heat. Alright, we're gonna try this again. We're back at it, and uh, Mark is letting me attempt to plant soybeans again. He is spraying in the same field. So, I have to try not to screw up. I guess what it was, there was a plugged tube. So it wasn't the seed meter, it was the actual tube. So I was looking in the wrong place. Anyways, I'm waiting for my GPS to warm up. And then we will rock and roll and get this field done. Okay, soybeans are done. We're off doing edible beans now. He is. All right. It's just me and you, lady. Okay, we finally made it back to the field that I just finished planting soybeans in, so now I'm gonna roll it. And the only reason I'm doing this field, even though it was our last planted, uh, is because I'm closest to Mark, and Mark's gonna start planting some black beans just down, uh, down the road from me. So we're the farthest away from home, and he just wanted the truck here full of seeds, so I brought it, it's over there. I brought it full of seeds so I can run over when he's empty and we're a lot closer than having to go all the way home. So that is the scoop. I'm just going to drop the roller and start rolling. Now I'm doing the headlands first so I have to do a smart path like I did the other day when I was um, using the joker. So. I'll kind of make a boundary and then um, I'm going to make a smart pass so it'll just follow that boundary every time I go around. Okay, here we go. Okay, I did my boundary, so we'll see how this goes. It's now scaring itself, but these are some pretty tight corners. Feeling a little nauseous. I 
have to, excuse me, I just had my snack of pepperettes and apples. That's all we eat when we're on the tractor. Um, our house is out of everything because I have teenagers at home now. So, never ready for field work. Anyway, I had to load up Mark again with seed and then I had to load the truck up with more seed. So I've been uh, not rolling for the last hour. So we're just gonna head back and do it all over again. That took all afternoon, but we finally have this field done and I'm just gonna head, just behind me is the other field, so I'm gonna just head over there and get that. I think it's only like 11 acres. And I say it shouldn't take me very long, but for whatever reason, 100 acres took me all day. <laughs> Not all day, all afternoon. So all I was doing there was just um, locking in these arms for the road so they don't fall. That would be bad. <laughs> 